taking off from Matsafa Airport in Aswatini in the Savage Cup and should be fun fun flight as this thing leaps into the air at about 40 knots actually it's unbelievable there we go 49 knots and it's just just flies away okay get the trim sorted out nice and we come slightly to the right so we're flying past that ridge going to look at the university it's about seven or eight miles up there and yeah, look at that hands-free you can't see it but believe me it is hands-free Mike India go off one I mean look at that view you can uh, yeah it's almost 360 and of course unobstructed view straight up uh, yeah brilliant little um, sightseeing aircraft which can land just about anywhere too now I'm going to put some right rudder trim in see if I can continue no I need to use a bit of aileron there need to go up that away the wind's blowing us off course that's okay there's so many cool things to see in my normal recon flights uh, doing about 250 300 knots you don't get to check out all the lovely details see if I can uh, just lift my seat a little bit uh, there we go brilliant and now I'll try a bit of right aileron oh sorry right rudder trim not sure if this aircraft has it actually doesn't appear to be doing much anyway it's okay Probably going a tad fast, showing 92 knots here, and that's uh, that's about maximum speed, I think. So let's just pull it back a bit. Enjoy the view. Mike India Golf 1. It's a tower, make 007007 frequency change. climb a little bit at this point because we're only a few miles out from the uh, university to 
two miles. Should be able to see it on the right. It's that collection of collection of buildings just through the canopy rails there. Yep, there it is. There's a playing field. Uh, one large building, large grounds, bunch of small buildings there. Excellent. Oops, let's keep left of it a bit so I get a good view. There we go. Awesome. Okay, now about eight miles up to the US Embassy, which is at the uh, Pretty much at the entrance of the North South Valley leading to the capital, uh, which I don't pronounce well at all. M B A B A N E. Mabani, I guess. Better climb a little bit. Just using trim controls there. It's all very sedate and civilized in the Savage Cup, strangely enough. Yes, despite the name, it's a very civilised way to, to uh, get around. So we're approaching, we're kind of riding along the north uh, east uh, part of Matsafa at the moment. Just out of town to the rural area, but visibly see the city past that hill over there where the airport is just over that hill as well but we're going to be going right down the centre of town uh, after this next turn there's just mag magical light there Sitting on about 80 
knots. Seems to be pretty happy with that speed. Sun breaking through the clouds there. And we can see the sun on the US Embassy up straight ahead. relaxing way to travel. So in the, you know, the other flight plan I've put together to go to the capital, which is up that valley, we actually turn right, turn right, turn left into this valley and go up over a, um, a dam. It's a very attractive flight and uh, very enjoyable in an aircraft like this. Lots of high terrain up there. So we're going to swing around the embassy now. I can't, I can't remember the name of the building next door, but uh, if you check Google, you'll find out it is listed. Bridge there. Yes, yeah, so there's a the large valley that runs directly up to the capital and there's a large highway that runs up the centre as well not sure if it's this one, I think it starts on the other side yeah, yeah, we're going to cross it in a moment actually actually, we're going to turn on, onto the highway what it is. It's extremely good. So here we are on the highway. Right, so the next major landmark is the Royal Palace, which is uh, on the left about four, three and a half miles away, at the base of one of the largest hills uh, in the area too. So this is pure IFR flying now, we are I follow roads as the joke goes. So not IFR, VFR, visual flight rules to be clear. Check out that, that river, looks uh, awesome, FAB I would say, FAB. Quite a bit of traffic on the road too. So 
So this palace comes up rather suddenly. It's only a mile and a half away now. I'm actually going to actually going to climb a bit. There we go. to the right a bit so we can get a good look at it. Here we are. So there's the large hill and there's the highway. There's the palace on a very commanding uh, piece of land as well. Okay, so we now we continue to follow the road. Excellent. Next stop, rather large shopping mall, which is uh, very easy to spot because the road kind of splits around it. It's a few miles away. What? How, how far? five or six miles yep. in fact I think we can see it already possibly that looks to be a little bit, little bit too close but it is a, that grey kind of colour anyway we'll find out in a moment good thing about travelling at this speed is um, you get plenty of time to work out where you are and what you're looking at. Now that building I did not identify on name but it is a because of the blue roof, the roofs, and the it's very distinctive uh, landmark as well. Yes, so that wasn't the um, now we're only about halfway to the shopping mall, it's uh, over the hills and far away. a little bit with the land. About three miles to the uh, shopping mall. Check out the colours in these buildings. They are awesome. Gonna get a closer look. Wow. Okay, I'll cut this corner. Now it should be very close, actually. I think it must be just around the next corner. Swing to the right a little bit. And look left, yes. So just at the bottom of this uh, section here, you'll see the big grey building in the middle of the road. And if we're flying a bit higher, you can see quite clearly how the road splits around it. But I'll, I'll just fly past it on the right. 
should be able to see that. Yep, see how the highway splits right around it. Two bridges, one on each side of it. So that's quite a distinctive landmark. And you've got the uh, two bridges on the river going around this very large shopping mall. Right, we carry on up the highway. So the second last turn point is a rather modest shopping mall on the outskirts of town. And it's about, I think it's five or six miles, four miles from here. So over this hill. Uh, now where's the main road on the left? So I'm actually going to get on the left hand side of it because we will be turning right. There it is. There's the main road. You just keep following that. these uh, I cannot remember I think it's I think it's some kind of school I think uh, don't hold me to that so a bit of a climb here we're at two and a half thousand feet now which was our uh, specified altitude for the flight and it just gets us over this hill 2600 actually right so not this uh, I think yeah I think the distant large building we can see Top, I think that was the uh, last second last turn point. Let's check the map. Here it comes. Yep, where are we? Uh, not sure. It uh, seems to. have the wrong map loaded, that's what it could have. Anyway, this is, this is the turn point. This is the one. And what a great view you get when you turn right here. Wow. So I, I like to make the last leg of a flight easy, straight line and with some great views because I've done all the hard work at the beginning, found all the tricky things, navigated about, then you just want to relax and uh, enjoy the last, savour the last leg of the flight. And so it is here and we go across some very deep valleys on this leg. It's about 10 miles. It's going to take us right pretty much to a reservoir just um, south west of the airport, actually, within visual distance.
so about five miles to the final turn point and we can see the airport sitting up there left to right just in front of that big hill Seems like time standing still at this altitude and this speed. But it is not. So this flight's coming up 27, 28. It's going to be a half hour flight. So let's uh, hope I can land before the GoPro runs out of batteries. But we'll see how it goes. If it does run out, at least we've got most of the flight in. We're approaching the final waypoint now. Which is the power station and a reservoir. Twilini power station. It's only two miles out now. We should be seeing it momentarily. Twenty-nine and a half minutes. Yeah, I've got a feeling that GoPro is going to stop in a moment. Here it is, it's on top of the hill. Twelve o'clock. It's a bit hard to see in the in that light. I'm going to just swing around watching.